Okay, my friends, we continue to talk about asthma. Uh, so, this is the second part of our lecture concerning asthma. We start with prognosis. Yeah, prognosis of asthma. Asthma resolves in many children, but as many as in one uh, is first in four wheezing persists into adulthood, adulthood or relapse as many as one in four, twenty-five percent. So, so wheezing persists into adulthood or relapse occurs in later years. Female sex smoking early age of onset and sensitization to household dust mites are risk factors for persistent and relapse. Although a significant number of deaths each year are attributed to asthma, most of these deaths are preventable with treatment. Thus the prognosis is good with adequate access to adherence to treatment. Risk factors for death include increasing requirements for oral corticosteroids before hospitalization, previous hospitalization for acute exacerbations, and lower PEF values at presentation. Several studies show that use of inhaled corticosteroids decreases hospital admission and mortality rates. Over time, the airway the airways in some patients with asthma undergo permanent structural changes, remodeling and develop to baseline airflow obstruction that is not completely reversible. Early aggressive use of anti-inflammatory drugs may help prevent this remodeling. Uh, so about treatment, treatment of asthma. Of course, control of triggers, drug therapy, monitoring, patient education, treatment of acute exacerbations. Uh, treatment objectives are to minimize impaired and risk, including preventing exacerbations and minimizing chronic symptoms, including nocturnal awakenings, to minimize the need for emergency department visits or hospitalizations, to maintain baseline normal pulmonary function and activity levels, and to avoid adverse treatment effects. Control of triggering factors. Triggering factors in some patients may be controlled with use of synthetic fiber pillows and impermeable mattress covers and frequent washing of bed sheets, pillow cases and blankets in hot water. Ideally, upholstered furniture, uh, up upholstered. Soft toys, carpets, curtains, and pets should be removed, at least from the bedroom, to reduce dust mites and animal dander. Uh, Dehumidifiers, dehum dehumidifiers, dehumidifiers, humidity, dehumidifiers, should be used in basements and in other poorly aerated damp roots to reduce mold. Stream treatment, steam treatment of homes diminishes dust mite allergens, allergens. House cleaning and extermination to eliminate cockroach exposure is especially important. Although control of triggering factors is more difficult in urban environments, environments the importance of these measures is not diminished at all. High efficiency particulate air HEPA vacuums and filters may relieve symptoms, but no beneficial effects on pulmonary function and on the need for drugs have been observed. And on the need for drugs have been observed. Sulfide sensitive patients should avoid sulfide containing food, for example, certain wine and salad dressing. Non-allergenic triggers such as cigarette smoke, strong odors, irritant, uh, irritant fumes, cold temperatures and high humidity should also be avoided or controlled when possible. 
Limiting exposure to people with viral upper respiratory infections is also important. However, exercise-induced asthma is not treated with exercise avoidance because exercise is important for health reason, health reasons. Instead, a short-acting bronchodilator is given prophylactically before exercise and as needed during or after exercise, rescue inhaler. Controller therapy, step two uh, of, no, okay, step two, yes, was that step two, step, uh, step one, so the steps, uh, steps of asthma management should be started if exercise induced. The symptoms are not responsive to rescue inhal inhalers or occur daily or more frequently. Okay, we will talk about uh, the steps of asthma management. Okay, okay. Patients with aspirin sensitive asthma can use acetaminophen, choline magnesium salicide, salicylate, or selexoxib in place of non steroid uh, anti inflammatory drugs. Asthma is a relative contraindication to the use of non selective beta blockers, but relative, relative contraindication, for example, propranolol, timolol. Carvedilol, Nadolol, Sotalol, including topical formulations, but cardio, uh, cardio, -selective, cardio selective drugs, uh, metoprolol, atenolol probably have no adverse effects. Where is bisoprolol? Okay, anyway, so drug therapy. Major drug cl classes commonly used in the treatment of asthma and asthma exacerbations include. Bronchodilators, beta-2 agonists, anticholinergics, corticosteroids, leukotriene modifiers, mast cell stabilizers, uh, mast cell stabilizers, yes. Uh, mast cell stabiliz stabilizers, methylxanthine, immunomodulators. Drugs in, this, in these cases are inhaled taken orally or injected subcontinuously or intravenously. Inhaled drugs come in aerosolized and powdered forms. Use of aerosolized forms with a spacer or holding chambers facilities the position of the drug in the airways rather than the pharynx. Patients are advised to wash and dry their spacers after each use to prevent bacterial contamination. In addition, use of aerosolized forms requires coordination between actuation of the inhaler, drug delivery, and inhalation. Powdered forms reduce the need for co uh, coordination because drug is delivered only when the patient inhales. Bronchial thermoplasty. Bronchial thermoplasty is a bronchoscopic technique in which heat is applied through device that transfers localized controlled controlled radio frequency waves to the airways the heat decreases the amount of airway smooth muscle remodeling and thus the smooth muscle mass that occurs with asthma in clinical trials in patients with severe asthma not controlled with multiple therapies there have been modest decreases in exacerbation frequency and improvement in asthma symptom control However, some patients have experienced an immediate worsening of symptoms, sometimes requiring hospitalization immediately after the procedure. Criteria for consideration of bronchial thermoplasty include severe asthma not controlled with inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonist, agonists, intermittent or continuous use of oral corticosteroids, fever one more than 50% of predicted, and no history of life-threatening exacerbations. Patients should understand the risk of post-procedure asthma exacerbation and need for hospitalization before proceeding with the procedure. Proceeding with the procedure. The long-term efficacy and safety of bronchial thermoplasty is not known. There are no data in patients with more than three exacerbations per year or an uh, fever one less than 50% of predicted because these patients were excluded from the clinical trials. 
Uh, monitoring response to treatment guidelines recommended uh, office use of spirometry to measure airflow limitation and assess impairment and risk. Spirometry should be repeated at least every one to two years in patients with asthma to monitor disease progression and the step up in therapy. might be required if lung function declines or becomes impaired with evidence of airflow obstruction. Outside the office, home path monitoring in conjunction with patient symptom diar diaries and the use of an asthma action plan is especially useful for charting diseases progression and response to treatment in patients with moderate to severe persistent asthma. When asthma is quiescent, one path measurement in monitor suff suffices. Should path measurements fall to less 80% of the patient's personal best, then twice day monitoring to assess circadian variation is useful. Circadian variation of more than 20% indicates airway instability and uh, the need to reevaluate the therapeutic regime. Uh, about patient education, the importance of patient education can be over, overemphasized. Patients do better when they know more about asthma, what triggers an exacerbation, what drug to use when proper inhaler technique, how to use a spacer with a method dose inhaler, MDI, method dose inhaler, MDI, and the importance of early use of corticosteroids in exacerbations. Every patient should have a written action plan for day-to-day -day management especially for management of acute exacerbations that is based on the patient's best personal peak flow rather than on a predicted normal value. Such a plan leads to much better asthma control, largely attribute, attributable to improved adherence to therapies, to therapies. Treatment of acute asthma exacerbation. The goal of asthma exacerbation treatment is to relieve symptoms and return patients to their best lung function. Treatment includes inhaled bronchodilators, beta-2 agonists, anti-anticholinergics, uh, usually systemic corticosteroids. Details of treatment of acute asthma exacerbations, including of severe attacks requiring hospitalization, are discussed. We will discuss. Not here, huh? So, uh, treatment of chronic asthma. Current asthma guidelines recommended treatment based on the severity of classification. Continuing therapy is based on assessment of control. Therapy is increased uh, stepwise fashion until the best control of impairment and risk is achieved. Step up. Before therapy is stepped up, ad adherence exposure to environmental fac factors for example, trigger exposure and presence of comorbid conditions, for example, obesity, allergic rhinitis, rhinitis, GERD, COEPD, obstructive sleep apnea, vocal cord dysfunction, inhaled cocaine use are reviewed. Cocaine use, yeah. These factors should be addressed before increasing drug therapy. Before increasing drug therapy. Once asthma has been well controlled for at least three months, drug therapy is reduced if possible, to the minimum that maintains good control. Step down for specific drugs and those. Uh, okay, less a little bit later. Or about steps? Okay, 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 okay. Steps. Uh, steps of asthma management. First step. Starting point for intermittent uh, asthma. Preferred treatment. Short acting better to agonist as needed. Step two. Starting point for mild persistent asthma, preferred treatment, low dose inhaled corticosteroid. Alternate treatment, mast cell stabilizer, leukotriene receptor antagonist or theophylline. theophylline. 
Kaeophilin or Zileoton. Uh, and step four, so step three, starting pointing for. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, huh? So it was starting two. Step two. And st step three, step three now. Starting point for moderate persistent asthma, preferred medium, medium dose inhaled corticosteroid or low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting beta 2 agonist. Yes. An alternate treatment, treatment, low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus one of the following leukotriene, receptor antagonist, teophylline or, zil or zilotone. Teophylline. And step four. My preferred treatment, medium dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long-acting beta-2 agonists and alternate treatment, medium dose inhaled corticosteroid plus one of the following leukotriene receptor, antagonist teophylline and zileotone. And finally, five and six, five step, fifth step, starting point for severe persistent asthma and preferred treatment, high dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting beta 2 agonist, and possibly omalizumab for patients with allergic asthma. And finally, uh, six step or uh, six step, high dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting beta 2 agonist plus oral corticosteroid, or possibly omalizumab, mepolizumab, or reslizumab for patients with evidence of allergic. Uh, asthma. So before stepping up, adherence environmental factors, for example, trigger, exposure, and comorbid conditions sh should be reviewed and managed if needed. And a short-acting beta-2 agonist is indicated to provide quick relief for all steps and to prevent exercise-induced asthma. About exercise-induced asthma, exercise-induced asthma can generally be prevented by prophylactic inhalation of short-acting short -acting, beta 2 agonist or mast cell stabilizer, stabilizer uh, before starting the exercise. If beta 2 agonists are not effective, if exercise-induced if exercise -induced asthma causes symptoms daily or more frequently, the patients require controller therapy. Aspirin sensitivity sensitive asthma. The primary treatment for aspirin-sensitive asthma is avoidance of aspirin and other non-steroid drugs, anti-inflammatory drugs, selecoxib. Selecoxib doesn't appear to be a trigger. Leicotrien modifier can blunt the response to non-steroid drugs. Uh, alternatively, densitization, 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 sensitivity, desensitization, desensitization, citation, desensitization can be done. Uh, for, sorry for my English. Uh, can be done in either the inpatient or outpatient clinic setting, depending on the severity of aspirin sensitivity and asthma severity. Des desensitization have been successfully in the major majority of patients who are able to continue desensitization treatment for more than one year. Okay, uh, future therapies, multiple therapies are being developed to target specific components of the inflammatory cascade. Therapies directed as interleukin-6, IL-6, uh, Timic, Stromal, and Lymphopoietin, Tumor Necrosis Factor Alpha, other chemokine, chemokines, and cytokines or uh, or their receptors are all under investigation or consideration as the therapeutic targets. Uh, so it's about special populations, infants, children, and, uh, and adolescents. Asthma is difficult to diagnose in infants. In infants, uh, thus, uh, under recognition and under treatment are common. Empiric trials of inhaled bronchodilators and anti-inflammatory drugs may be helpful for both. Drugs may be given by nebulizer or MDI with a holding chamber with or without a face mask. Infants and children less than five years 
who require treatment more than two times a week, should be given daily anti-inflammatory therapy with inhaled corticosteroids, preferred, leco 3 and receptors, antagonists or chromoline. Children more than chromoline, chromoline. Children more than five years old and adolescents with asthma can be treated similarly to adults. They should be encouraged to maintain physical activities, exercise and sports participation. Predicted norms for pulmonary function tests in adolescents are closer to childhood, not adult standards. Adolescents and mature younger children should participate in developing their own asthma management plans and establishing their own goals for therapy to improve adherence. The action plan should be understood by teachers and school nurses to ensure reliable and prompt access to rescue drugs. Chromaline and nedochromyl are often tired in this group but are not uh, beneficial as inhaled corticosteroids. Long-acting drugs prevent the problems, for example, inconvenience, embarrassment or having to take drugs at school. Uh, about one third of women with asthma, pregnant women, who become pregnant in no ties, relief of symptoms, one uh, third notice, third no ties worsening, at times to severe degree, and one third no change. Jert may be an important contributor to symptomatic disease in pregnancy. Asthma control during pregnancy is crucial because poorly controlled maternal disease can result in increased prenatal mortality, premature delivery, and low birth weight. Asthma drugs haven't been shown to have adverse fatal effects, but safety data are lacking. In general, uncontrolled asthma is more of a risk to mother and fetus than adverse effects due to asthma drugs. Uh, suspect carbon dioxide retention and respiratory failure in pregnant women with uncontrolled controlled asthma and PCO2 levels near, near 400 mm uh, hydrargium. Older patients have a high prevalence of uh, other obstructive lung disease, for example, COEPD, so it's important to determine the magnitude of the reversible component of airflow obstruction for example, by two to three week trial of inhaled corticosteroids or pulmonary function testing with bronchodilator challenge. Older patients may be more sensitive to adverse effects of beta-2 agonists and inhaled corticosteroids. Patients requiring inhaled corticosteroids, particularly those with risk factors for osteoporosis, may benefit from measures to preserve bone density for example, calcium and vitamin D supplements, bisphosphonates, bisphosphonates. So, key points. Asthma triggers range from environmental allergens and respiratory irritants to infection, aspirin, exercise, emotion, and gastroesophageal reflux disease. Consider asthma in patients who have unexplained persistent coughing, particularly at night. If asthma is suspected, arrange pulmonary function testing with metacoline provocation if necessary. Educate patients on how to avoid triggers. Control chronic asthma with drugs that modulate the allergic and immune response, usually in health corticosteroids with other drugs, for example, long-acting bronchodilators, must mast cell stabilizers, leukotriene inhibitors. Edit based on asthma severity. Treat acute exacerbations with inhaled beta-2 agonists and anticholinergic drugs, systemic corticosteroids and sometimes injected epinephrine. Treat asthma aggressively during pregnancy. So that's all concerning asthma. Uh, actually, we'll talk about asthma. We talked about asthma several times. But anyway, this is a 
very common problem, so we will talk about uh, asthma in other lectures. Anyway, thanks for your attention, and once again, please don't forget, not only follow and subscribe this channel in YouTube or in podcast, up to you, uh, I don't know where you will hear or see this lecture, but also make your donations, please. Uh, our your, your donations are absolutely important, because without these donations, we will close. Huh? So, thank you very much and see you in another lecture, next lectures. Bye. God bless you.